What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Now, today, we are back here with some 2023 Cricket World Cup match review between the Aussies and Team India. Of course, the host nation, India, do end up coming away with this victory pretty comfortably in the end, I want to say. It was looking like it could have shaped up to be... Not a high-scoring thriller, but at least making India have to chase 260, 250-ish. Gee whiz, did that fall away pretty quickly. But hey, we're just going to jump straight into this one, of course. The match did finish at 3.30 a.m. My, uh, my time this morning. So it, I've only got, had about four hours sleep. So if my energy seems a bit off or I just seem like I'm a walking corpse, that would seem why. But hey, we're going to run through this one, of course. India just too dominant, really too dominant. It makes me question Australia's lineup. It makes me question why we only went in with the one spinner. It makes me question why Moses on Riggs isn't playing. It makes me with a lot of thoughts in this team. And it, on, of, of course, every game is not going to be played in Chennai. So it's, a, it's different conditions. India suit those, you know, dustier sort of conditions a lot better. They know them heaps better. But I thought if we would have learnt anything from the BGT series, it was not to throw your wickets away um, against an Indian team because they will then take that momentum and bury you in the ground with it like they did here. So firstly, I'm just going to say, can Australia win the World Cup? No, forget it. All right. We're not going to win. Anyways, moving on. Player of the match. Let's get into it. KL Rahul. Just big ups to the man. I mean, he, he's the guy who, you know, he feels like, you know, he, he gets memes made about him. He gets, you know, a few jokes about Orange Cap and Hospital Rahul and stuff like that. And it's all, of course, just banter. It's all for fun. But when he stands up like this and shows really why he is always a lock in this Indian team, just like today, that partnership him and Coley had was match winning and really deserved his century. You could tell he was so pissed off he didn't get that 100 at the end, but really deserved it and is a good 97 not out in my book. So all credit goes to KL there. I was talking about KL Rahul and then I lost my concentration and stopped talking and then I started thinking about Mitchell Marsh's drop catch last night. So that's kind of just made me sit here for a few minutes, but we shall continue. I'm sure we'll talk about it a bit later on. <laughs> Oh, Mitchell Marsh. Ugh. All right, moving on. Anyways, I'll edit that out. David Candice Warner, 41 or 52. Six, uh, six fours. Looked really good. That partnership between him and Smudge was hopefully going to be the game winner, or at least setting up the game. Did not happen. I mean, he got a, he got a beauty from Kuldeep Yadav. Well, not even a beauty. He just hit it straight back to him. Maybe it stuck in the surface a little bit more than usual. Got up got, got up on him a little bit. Yuja. Uh, Yuja. I cannot speak a little bit usual um, than it would, but yeah, unfortunately falls short of a 50 at least. And, and just, we just needed someone to go on with one of those 40 scores. I mean, him and Smudge both in the 40s. We needed one of those to turn into a 75 and 80 like it was for Verat or KL. So just a few, few things there that, of course, the heat was a factor, uh, but batting first was the right decision with the toss and, yeah, maybe it wasn't in the end. Mitchell Marsh gone for a golden duck. Uh, okay, Mitchell, I don't know if... <laughs> I, I know you're a Daly Capitals player. I know that you, you, you know, it, it, it's a good bit of income. Come on, mate, you can't be... Uh, actually, we will get to the drop catch later on. But you can't be edging it to Virat Kohli straight down his throat in the first or second over. That is all the momentum straight to India off the get-go. It was a ripping catch from Kohli. It was a ripping delivery from Bumrah. Quick as fuck, doing a little bit, like, not unplayable, but really difficult to at least put away unless you leave it. So, unlucky, but... You know, Bison, we love you. Um, you are the reason that this country even has a T20 World Cup title next to its name. So there will be no hatred of Mitchell Marsh for me. But you do this shit again. <laughs> you do it again and we'll think about it. Uh, Steve Smith, 46 off 71. So look, Steve, he tried to dig in there for a bit. But when you get, I want to say, ball of the fucking century from Jadeja, there's not much you can do about it. I think it was this delivery from Jadu, wasn't it? Yeah, um, there's not a lot you can do about it. You just stand there in disbelief and fucking on your bike, Steve. Like, what can you do about that? Not even I could have played that. Not even Sir Andy or Grant Flower could have played that in their prime. Like, it's just... It's 
It's weird. Jadeja, does he have something against Australians? Like, it's like he, he saves his best in match-winning performances against us. <laughs> what did we do? You know, Jadu? Um, anyways, mate, well bowled in just match-winning stuff. Manus Rabaskagni, 27 off 41 again. I mean, he tried. He tried. That's all I can ask. He tried, you know. It's all right. It's whatever. Doesn't bother me. Glenn Maxwell. Well, another IPL incentive, man. I hope RCB bump up that contract for that one. He gets bold. Deep, I mean, good delivery from Kuldeep. One of the best wrist spinners, if not the best wrist spinner in the world in white ball cricket. But <sighs> going for 15, we're just lacking. We're lacking someone in this middle order to give us a bit of that oomph. Um... I can't remember if I spoke about it before the video had corrupted, but I would like to see maybe a switch of Marsh um, and, and Green potentially, or, or, or even going like a Glenn Maxwell up to up to open. Like I know that's a crazy solution, but we need to find someone that is similar to a Travis Head and can can really just get us going from the start. Because when Warner goes, if if Marsh like Marsh is gone for nothing. It puts so much pressure early on Smudge and Warner. Um, and then after that, you've got Labashane, who's not very experienced in ODI cricket. Glenn, obviously, but he doesn't want to have to come out at the 20th over mark. And then you've got Carey, who just, I don't, I don't even know what bro does in the side, except for keeping and, and getting in the way of Mitch Marsh to drop fucking catches. I don't understand. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. It's funny. I actually just went on a massive rant about the Mitch Marsh drop catch and Alex Carey getting in his way, but you're not going to see that because the video didn't even record it, but I might try and uh, get another rant out, but really just, uh, we'll get into it, really flattening stuff that, but um, Alex Carey, Jadu gets him, Jadu tore apart our middle order, and, and just having that, India having that trio on the Chennai pitch, they went in prepared, they knew what the deck was going to do, so that's why they went in with Jadu, Kuldeep, and Ashwin, three of them completely different spinners, all do different things, but make you pay if you don't play it properly and Ashwin was getting so much bounce through the pitch and just turning it a whole lot. Cool Deep is just a mystery bowler and then you've got, well Ashwin's a mystery bowler too, but then you've got Jadu who brings your stock off breaks but just hits the money every single fucking time does Jadu. It's like, does he not like us? I don't know. We, we like you Jadu but if, if you could stop bringing your best when you play us, that, that would be handy because it's getting a little bit upsetting for us at the moment, to be honest. Glenn, after BGT series, you're causing me a lot of nightmares, uh, Ravindra. Glenn Maxwell. No, nope, I think I spoke about him. Moving on. Cam Green, that's who I'm up to. 8 off 20. Yeah, I mean, he had to come out and face spin immediately. He's not a great... I mean, he's not a terrible player of spin, but he would much rather stay at the top of the order and, and use the pace off the bowlers and... and and do that, just like we've seen him do in T20 cricket in India for Mumbai. So I don't understand why he's kind of playing at, batting at seven for fuck's sake. Like, either play him as an opener, get Marsh down at maybe four or five, and then move Maxwell down to seven maybe, or you bring in Tim David. Like, there's so many options, but we always seem to stick with the same 11 and never try to change things, which always pisses me off um, with this setup. So... Things to be questioned. India bowled fantastically, but just some average cricket at times. Um, but yeah, I mean, Camo, some late runs, so some handy tail tail order runs. Camo, yeah, we'll get we'll talk more about him. But his 15 runs was the highlight of his match, I would say. Um, Mitchell Stark hit a beautiful six off Bumra, 28 off 35. He's actually an okay batter and striker, as we know. Um, so, look, we were probably looking at 160, 170, and then they gave us that little push towards 200, which wasn't a match winner, but at least gave us a bit of pride towards the end. Um, but, yeah, at, at, I mean, at one point, we were three for 110. I'm thinking, we're on here, boys. We are fucking on. I mean, not even before that. Like, before Smith went out, of course, we're three for, or two for 110. It, it's on. We are on. For 250 plus, and then and then yeah, it gets gets taken away from you quite quickly in India, doesn't it? That is how quickly things can change in India. Um, with with just the con not even the conditions, but just overall playing. Like you think that you're on top of the game, and then a few spinners come around and do a few fucking webs around you, and before you know it. You're out for 199 and you haven't even faced the full 50 overs. So into the Indian bowlers. 
God, aren't, aren't India blessed to have this man back in their team? Jasper at Boomer, three, three. Two for 35 off 10, sorry. Um, very economical, straight up with that new rock. Makes it talk early. He's just scary. He's so He would be so scary to face him. India, they've been relying on Siraj to be that main strike up front bowler, which has worked out good. But now Siraj gets to slot into that second seamer option, which is such a better position for him to come on after Bumrah. Um, and having that combo between them, with the new with the new ball is so deadly um could be the deadliest like opening pair bowlers in the world in white ball cricket you've arguably well siraj is ranked number one isn't he and then boomer off talent and skill it's hard to say that he's not the number one bowler in the world too so when you've got those two bowling for you you feel good hardik pandya look Krunal, he wouldn't have been happy with the economic, uh, the, the economy of this. Nine runs and over is, is not Krunal-like, but he'll give you a few lessons when you get home. One for 28 off three. Ravi Ashwin, this is why you pick him, not just against Australia, but almost every game. He's just so smart. He slows down the game. Like, we were losing wickets, and then they bring on Ashwin, and it just completely stalls the game. Um, just incredibly difficult. Smith had trouble. They all had trouble playing him. Just the extra bounce, the turn, it was just... He, he does things that not many else can, um, especially in his home conditions that he knows better than anyone. So, yeah, just... Just superb. <laughs> Just really superb. Uh, Kuldeep Yadav, similar. Two for 42 of uh, 10. I'm so happy to see him back in this team dominating as the most informed white ball wrist spinner in the world. So really happy there. And then you've got Jadu, three for 28 off 10. And all three of those spinners, like, they bring different components. They're such different bowlers, but they all just work so well together. And in, in, in conditions like Chennai, they knew what they were doing and uh, Australia did not because we picked one specialist spinner. Where's Nathan Lyon? Don't fucking know, but he's back home. He's sitting on the couch. Nathan Lyon would have been good last night. Of course, we're not going to play every game at Chennai, but yeah, maybe, you know, we've got two upcoming games in luck now. Maybe, you know, I know that it spins a little bit there. So maybe you give an opportunity to Gaz. I don't know. Anyways, into the Indian batsmen. So... India need 200 to chase down. Should do it. Should not walk it in, but you should do it comfortably on your home deck. You're feeling good. You don't have to rush it. Hold on a minute. <laughs> the things start on fire. Ishan Kishan is gone for a golden duck. Just a shit shot. Don't need to play at it. He swings at it. Well, gives a little, just just puts the bat out to it into, into the slip of Cam Green. He's not going to drop that shit. A Mumbai Indian teammates get each other out there. So he's gone early. That's a good start. So they're one for none, was it? Straight away, two for one off the bat. And then next, row it hit, man. Sharma, gone LBW. I think the next over by Hoff Hazelwood. Um, plum. Terrible review from Rowett, but you could tell that he just wanted to stay out there. <laughs> he did not want to be that guy who went out for a duck as the captain in the opening game. But it was a pretty shit review, I'm not going to lie. But hey, he goes for a duck. It makes things super interesting early. So India are what? Two for two after 1.3 overs. Shireyas Ayers at the crease with Virat Kohli as the new batsman. Oh, yeah. He's then gone. Caught by David Warner. India are what? Was it three for two? Yeah, three for two. And, and I'm feeling good. I'm finally feeling better. You know, I was I was, I was was tempting to go to sleep at, at the innings break and say, this is done. But I decided to stay up because I wanted to see if something crazy would happen. And it started beautifully. I, I was up and about. It was like 1.30 at that time here. I was feeling good, ready to witness an absolute thrilling finish. And then, uh, as we do know, uh, the greatest ODI player of all time, Virat Kohli, walks out to the crease. And he's alongside the man KL, uh, and uh, they pretty much win the match right there. So, <laughs> hey, look, I, I'm trying to get both perspectives of my Australian perspective and being upset, but I'm also trying to not let my bias come across when I'm, you know, reviewing games and stuff as well, because, of course, India is the, my second team that I do follow and pay attention to the most. So, yeah, it, it, it's a tricky one for me in the middle here, but match winning match winning partnership that's all you can say like Coley look I mean he 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 wasn't starting on fire like he just kind of knocked a few around moved it around and then he, he hit this one drive straight down the ground I think it was off Camo and it really just kick-started his innings KL was also the same and couldn't get one out 
Of course, there was a big chance to get Coley out. I think he was on 20 something maybe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but early in the Kings innings, you've, you've got to take chances. If you have got the chance to take Virat Kohli's wicket with a simple catch, you do it. You just fucking take it with one hand, put it in your pocket and move on and be grateful that you've got the man out. Alex Carey, Mitchell Marsh. Now, who am I blaming the most? I want to say Alex Carey, of course, Mitchell Marsh, my, my grandma would have taken that. She would have taken it with one fucking mitt, or honestly. Like, I would have taken that with one finger on my hand. It would have just stuck right in the palm. But it hit Mitchell Marsh right on the tip of his dick. You can't catch it with the tip of your dick, mate. I'm sorry, but it just, Jesus Christ. I don't know if he's going to have kids after that, but you can forget about kids now because you might have dropped the World Cup, Mitchy Marsh. Um... Of course, I love you, Mitch. You know, you're the only reason that we even have a T20 World Cup title to our names, but ah, it just wasn't a good day at the office for the man Bison, and um, Alex Carey is just as much to blame for that. You are the wicket keeper. You, you have got the gloves on. You either decide to call it as yours early, or you get the F out of the way and let the man who doesn't have gloves running directly at you take the catch without thinking that he's going to collide into you. Carey decided to uh, uh, just kind of stand there and, and watch it. Like, man, it just fucking frustrated me something shocking. But, hey, Coley stays out there. And right that happened, I knew the game was done. I knew that he dropped the game right there. And he did indeed. So... Coley then just went on a little tear. KL went on a little tear. And I don't think there was any any other chances to get wickets after that. I think there was just that one chance of Coley, and I think that was almost it. Like, no real missed runouts, no missed catches other than that. Just just outstanding batting on conditions that they know better than anyone else. And, um, yeah, hard watch at some point. Um, you've just got to take those catches. Catches win matches, as we know, but not taken an India completely make the Aussies pay and, and put them to bed um, in about 40 overs. So just dominant performance from both. And um, of course, Coley did go out. He looked so pissed off that he didn't get that 100. He deserved it. Didn't get 100. He looked so angry in the change rooms. And that, that's what you want to see from a leader and someone who just is hungry for more. Um, and KL, he was similar. He tried to get 100 off his last ball. Didn't work out. He looked pissed off, but he got his 97 and it was an outstanding match winning inning. So yeah, I think that's all to really be said about that. I mean, the fact that Jadu didn't even have to bat, Ashwin, who's a quality bat, didn't even have to bat. So, yeah, Shutman Gill will come back next game, you would assume. And India is looking strong. I mean, them and the Kiwis have got to be the two top favourites of mine at the moment. Into the Aussie bowlers, Mitchell, Alyssa, Healy, Stark, one for 31 off eight. I, I liked it up front with the ball. I mean, as always, he's our best strike opening bowler so happy <laughs> i guess hazelwood he bowled incredibly well csk and rcb blood three for 38 off nine he was fantastic just hitting the right spots every single time patrick sir camo the come man i don't know are you are you what's going on patrick we're gonna need a bit more out of you son you're meant to be leading us after that first I think it was the first Ashes Test match where he saved us and, and, and got the winning runs. It's like since then, it's kind of just teetered away for Camo. It's just kind of like gone in a downwards downwards trajectory, which is not ideal, especially when he's our captain and meant to be arguably our best bowler. So going to need to see a little bit more from Camo in these next few games. G Maxwell, I mean, he's a good spinner. He's not a part-timer. He's a decent spinner, but... It just, we were in fucking Chennai. We needed another really quality spinner. None for 33 off eight. Cam Green, none for 11 off two. Whatever. I mean, I think he got, didn't he get a wicket of, oh, no, that's right. He caught Ishan. That's right. Um, and then Adam Zampa, none for 53 off eight. So I guess that is what it is. Like, again, Nathan Lyon, do you bring, should, should have he been there? Tanvi Sanger was available, could have picked him, but we decided to go with our own pride instead, and that's the true Australian way. So, hey, that is officially going to cap that one off. Let's get a table update. Oh, India's fifth. I was about to say, why are they fifth? But, of course, so every team has played one match now, so it's starting to take a bit of shape here. The Kiwis um, and... India would have to be favourites of mine. I mean, the Proteas look strong-ish, but um, yeah. So let's jump. What's next in the upcoming schedule? Today, we've got that Kiwis versus the Netherlands. 
go the Dutch. Um, and then we've got England versus the Bangladesh. Go Bangladesh. Um, Pakistan versus Sri Lanka. I don't really give a fuck who wins that. I just hope it's a good game. India versus Afghanistan. Aussies versus the Proteas. NZ v Bangladesh. India v Pakistan, which will be match 12. So that'll be huge, of course. We're all waiting for that. That that may be the most viewed like cricket game in history, that, or at least in, in this year. But... Um, yeah, honestly, just uh, interesting. Interesting time of events last night. India way too strong. They win by six wickets, of course. It is only the first game for both, so there's still plenty to come. But, yeah, I don't know. Interesting match last night. Comment down below all of your thoughts on this one. Subscribe if you're new. Leave a like. And I'll see everyone in the next one.